Okay, we're here in John chapter 1. Here's how we got here. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 1. The healing at the Bethesda pool. You can read these verses. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there is in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool that is called, in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these were lying a great multitude of the ailing, lying, lame, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Immediately the man became well, and picked up his pallet, and began to walk. Now it was the Sabbath on that day. So the Jews were saying to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But he that was healed had not known who he is, for Jesus did not move away, a multitude being in the place. But Jesus did move away, a multitude being in the place. So that implies that he disappeared and they uh, not traceable. After these things, or after where Jesus found, found him in the temple and said to him, Say you have been made well or have become well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So Jesus returns to Jerusalem at feast time. He heals an invalid at Bethesda Pool on the Sabbath. And Jesus' command that the man pick up his pallet and walks was made. Jesus' authorities pursued them both for allegedly violating the Sabbath. I say allegedly. The healed man for carrying his pallet and Jesus for healing him. When confronted by the Jews, the man blamed Jesus for it all, to avoid punishment from the Jews. And that might have been severe. Meanwhile, Jesus slipped away through the crowds and later found the man he healed at the temple. He told him to sin no more, lest something worse happen with a view to his unconscionable ingratitude. Now let's see that. The verse rendered... After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. It indicates that a significant passage of time ha had occurred since Jesus came to Galilee shortly after a previous Passover. Now, the Sinaiticus manuscript has the word the feast with a definite article to signify another Passover, a very early manuscript. The key Jewish feast since Jesus kept the three major annual feasts, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, and since he celebrated three Passovers, which marked the passage of his earthly ministry, according to the account in, in John, then it is likely that the feast in view in John 5.1 was another Passover, which Jesus celebrated in Jerusalem. Now the passage goes on to say that in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there was a pool, in actuality, a double pool called Bethesda. It was surrounded by colonnades on four sides 
and a fifth colonnade standing on the dividing walk that separated the northern and southern pools. It had five porches with two on each end and one in the middle. And within these five porches were lying a great number of the ailing, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the water which they evidently believed was a signal of availability of supernatural healing in the waters for the first person that entered the pool. Now, there's some manuscripts out there that have this following verse, John 5, 4. Here are the manuscript uh, numbers. They are from the 4th century or later. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons, literally throughout certain times, into the pool and stirred up the water. And whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in was made well from whatever disease which with which he was afflicted. But we look to earlier manuscripts that do not have John 5, 4. These are ones, and plus the com compilation uh, of Westcott Hort and a number of other key United Bible Societies, key uh, uh, passages and compilations of Scripture uh, examined by people early on. And uh, they don't have this John 5, 4. Verse 7 corroborates that there was a superstition amongst those who went to the pool, that the first one to enter the pool when the water appeared agitated would be healed. The truth of the matter is that verse 4 neither fits the context of the Gospel of John nor the character of God. There is no corroboration that the angel of the Lord periodically agitated the water in this, the uh, Bethesda pool and healed only the person who managed to enter the pool first. This would contradict God's healing by grace. Nevertheless, many individuals who came to the Bethesda pool, believing in this myth, did so with an unscriptural, blind, irrational, and desperate hope. So the invalid man had been confirmed to a bed for 38 years, which made it nearly impossible for him to be the first one to get into the healing waters of the pool before anyone else when the waters appeared agitated. Jesus, with a supernatural knowledge of the invalid man's long-term condition, approached the man as he was lying on the ground at one of the porches of the pool. He asked him if he wanted to be healed. The man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. The man evidently did not look to Jesus for healing. Instead, the invalid explained to Jesus the hopelessness of his getting healed because he had no help, one to help him into the pool ahead of everyone else. He did not recognize who Jesus was, nor the possibility with Jesus' question, Do you want to be made well? And that question that Jesus might be offering to be to help him be cured in some manner. The implication there was not received. Then Jesus said, Rise, take up your bed and walk, which implied that he, something had happened. The man was immediately made well, evidently recognized that he was healed, stood up and picked up his pallet and began to walk as Jesus had told him to do. Note that there is no indication that the invalid man was required by Jesus to believe in him to be healed before he was made well. Another man interjected that all of this had occurred on the Sabbath. Now when the Jews approached the healed man, they said, It is the Sabbath, and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. In their view, this was a stoning offense. Instead of showing compassion for him being healed, they tried to convict him of violating the law, and having him stoned to death. The man said to the Jews, He who had made me well said to him, Take up your bed and walk, putting the blame on, squarely on Jesus. The Jews interrogated the man further. Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? In their view, this was a capital offense by Jesus for healing on the Sabbath. I'll move up a little bit. The healed man answered that he did not know it was he who, was, who it was who healed him. Jesus, author John, stipulated that Jesus had already disappeared in the crowd of people in the area. Jesus could have avoided the Jews yet another time. 
But the cured man had such a problem with sin that it motivated Jesus to come back and speak to him. He said to the man, what was first on Jesus' mind, see you have been made well. Sin no more. Least a worse thing come upon you. At that time, Jesus permitted the Jewish authorities to encounter him. Note that there is no implication being made by Jesus that sin brought upon the healed man is lengthy disease, nor did his cure occur as a result of his repentance or faith. There is nothing stipulated to that end either. Jesus indicated that such sin could cause an even worse condition than his being crippled. And that was his unconscionable ingratitude toward the Son of God for healing the man, as exemplified by the man pointing Jesus out to the Jews to curry favor with them. Jesus' command to the once crippled man to sin no more is emphatic and points to his ingratitude as well as the direction his life should take. And that would be one of endeavoring to walk in a manner pleasing to God. Sinless perfection though, may be an unrealistic goal for flawed mankind. But this is not to say that one should not make an effort not to sin. So what is implied is that sin can cause temporal consequences in an an individual, especially his inconscionable lack of gratitude, which consequences for continued sin may be even worse than the man's long-term illness. Note that neither Jesus nor the healed man were breaking any regulation in the law of Moses. Important. The Jewish leaders, however, fabricated self-serving regulations and strictly enforced them as if they were a part of the law. They took scripture out of context, redefined and added to it for their own purposes. Although the Mosaic law required that work cease on the seventh day, There is no statute that prohibits acts of mercy or acts vital to the preservation of life, eternal or physical, animal or human, i.e. acts of good on the Sabbath. For prohibition, prohibition of good should be, would be evil. Just as the Mosaic law permits an animal which is in a life-threatening situation to be rescued on the Sabbath, Take a look at Luke 14.5. And just as untying one's own animal and leading it to water is permitted on the Sabbath, which people, including Pharisees, did regularly. So the law permits a man to be healed, pick up his pallet, and go home, a whole man, on the Sabbath. There was no danger of punishment according to the law, but according to the, the willful acts of the Pharisees, there was. Furthermore, if the actions of the healed man were actually a violation of the Mosaic Law, then it would also have been a violation for all the others who brought their pallets, mats, etc. with them to the pool on the Sabbath. There was no question of them. But there is no evidence that the Pharisees pursued them also. Interesting points. 